Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining This is Long-Term Care 2022, and in particular, joining us today to hear about People Care's journey to recover strong, which is all about fostering our employee wellness and getting back to purpose after two long years of, of a pandemic. Uh, my name is Sheena Campbell. I'm the Vice President of Communications and Engagement at People Care Communities, and I'm joined today by some of our uh, wonderful partners along this journey. Hi everyone, my name is Nancy Hood and I'm the Training and Learning Development Lead with Your Health Space. Um, we had the pleasure of partnering with People Care over the last several months. And I'm Shandra Van Lowe. Uh, I'm a Recreation Therapist at Hilltop Manor and one of the nine wellness champions that support the People Care communities. People Care's journey to recover strong began uh, quite a while ago, last summer. We recognized an opportunity to continue building on our collective strengths and some of the things that we were doing well during the, uh, as we navigated the ongoing pandemic. We also wanted to acknowledge the impact of the pandemic and ask our employees to share their experiences so that we could take action based on what we heard. And then we wanted to think about what opportunities did we have for all, helping all of our employees to focus on their ongoing well being. Our goal was to help everyone feel renewed, a sense of purpose, and revitalized as we transition forward. Our first step was to do an employee wellness survey. We asked all of our employees some key questions in three buckets around responding, recovering, and revitalization. Close to 400 staff responded, which was almost 40% of People Care's workforce, and that included over 320 frontline staff. The answers gave us really valuable information about where we should be focusing our collective wellness efforts. So as an example, this was an opportunity for a quick win. We had enhanced our employee assistance program throughout the pandemic. And when we asked our employees about it, we found out 31% said they didn't know about the employee assistance program. So it's pretty hard for somebody to take advantage of a resource or a support if they don't understand it, they don't know how to access, or they don't even know it exists. We asked our employees how they felt. And while we got some um, good responses about how people were managing without the normal supports that they would have in place, we found that 22% told us that they weren't doing all that well. So that gave us an important clue to say, yes, you are focused in the right place when you're spending time and energy and resources on helping employees um, get back to a more, um, to get back to wellness and focus on their well being and recovery. We also found when we asked, what should we be doing more of? Overwhelmingly, they said, wellness and recognition were two key pieces, and we should focus some time and attention on that as we try to build uh, and enhance our culture of well-being and employee engagement. Thanks to the important information given to us by the survey, we started to plan targeted focused actions and strategies for the next 12 to 24 months under our Recovering Strong Employee Wellness Strategy. So with staff saying that they wanted more recognition, as an example, we launched a courage and then uh, later on a people uh, values week where we were focused for a full week on celebrating how our staff were living our values within our homes. We also held caregiver appreciation weeks. We had um, lawn signs thanking them out uh, in front of our homes and all kinds of other uh, activities and uh, wellness focus, everything layered with a wellness focus. And Shandra, I wonder if you would share a little bit about how, what that looked like in your home and how that, um, the experience of that with you and your team went. Definitely. Both the Walk to Wellness and our Caregiver Appreciation Week saw a ton of great employee engagement. There was lots of offerings to help enhance wellness, um, like massages, vintage candy bags, raffles and prize draws, cuddles with our support dogs, and lawn signs to help say thank you to our great caregivers. One of the most, uh, we feel, unique aspects of our Recovering Strong uh, strategy is the development of and identification of wellness champions. So it's very important to people care that we do a lot of listening uh, and learning and then taking action. And so engagement and input from staff at all levels of the organization is super important. 
So we asked uh, our homes and our leadership support office, reached out to our staff and said, you know, who would like to put their hand up and get involved uh, and provide us um, with some insight and engagement and um, help us develop what we felt was this evolving strategy. And so uh, this is our uh, a look at our wellness champions uh, of which Chandra is one. And again, the champion's role we envisioned at the beginning to help bring input into, you know, on an ongoing basis and create the feedback loops with our staff about what was important to them, what would help them, and um, also to foster engagement so that when we launched an activity or a resource or support to make sure people knew about it, raise awareness, we're taking advantage of it, uh, those sorts of things. And again, Chandra, I'll, I'll ask you to sort of comment uh, on why you volunteered and, and what that's looked like for you. Definitely. Um, so when I first learned of the opportunity to join this team, I was instantly excited to help. Um, as a recreation therapist, my goal every day is to help people live their best lives. So how great would it be to be able to translate this to the people that are taking care of our residents? Um, our newly composed championship team was invited to join a session at Leadership Support Office, and I wasn't totally sure what to expect. Um, some faces were familiar, but many of them were new. Um, the day started uh, and it was shaped around both taking a look at where we were at with our own wellness, using lots of different deep reaching offerings and tools to sort of self assess and, and see where we were at. Um, and then we were also invited to share and brainstorm as a group as to where we thought our individual homes were sort of expressing the, the most need. Um, overall, the day was, was great. Um, we left with a great open feeling of wellness, optimism, unity, um, and some direction moving forward. So overall, it was a really, really great start to the team. I think uh, one of the most interesting aspects of our wellness champions, again, it's self-selected. And what we found was it's a really nice mix of individuals who are, the well, they're all the go-to people in our homes, quite often the folks that people come to to talk to, um, potentially share their experiences and stories with, but they're not all on the home leadership team. And so one of the key uh, elements and, and what makes it really work sometimes, and Chandra, you're also um, a member of rec team, but not necessarily of the home leadership team is the partnership between our champions, uh, whoever they are, whatever role they play at our home, and our executive directors in terms of um, providing sort of that integrated, um, um, not, not just support, but brainstorming and ideas and sort of bringing back um, feedback about what some of our ideas are um, back and forth. So, so I think that works uh, really well, having that nice mix. I want to talk a little bit uh, now about our CMHA partnership. So again, Recovering Strong is an ongoing uh, evolving strategy, as I've said, and we've been working on it for over a year. And as we went forward um, and started to think about what kind of supports and resources we could offer our staff in terms of their mental health and well-being, we knew we're not the experts. And so we wanted to make sure that you know, we kind of elevated uh, what we were, the offering that we were providing to our staff. And so we reached out to the Canadian Mental Health Association, Ontario, and we were absolutely thrilled with their enthusiasm and uh, willingness to come over and partner with People Care to provide some tailored supports. Um, and Nancy Hood and her team have just been wonderful with us. And thanks, Sheena, for those kind words, and, and the feelings are certainly mutual. So Your Health Space is a program of CMHA Ontario, and we are funded by uh, the Ministry of Health, making our program free to healthcare organizations across the province. So when People Care reached out to us, we were incredibly enthusiastic um, to want to work with them because we had heard a lot about um, the challenges that had been faced in long-term care as a result of COVID. Um, and knowing what we know about mental health, we know that just because we're knowing how to live through a pandemic and certain restrictions are lifting, it doesn't mean that the impact of that pandemic is going to go away. So when People Care uh, came to us and they said, you know, we, we want to uh, provide enhanced mental health literacy for our staff to help support them, we said we want to work alongside you in doing that. And they really shared um, the 
authentic nature of their engagement through their wellness champions. And one of the things they were really clear about, which I thought was uh, incredible, was they said, you know, we don't know what the issues of our staff are. And I said, great. Um, I'm glad you don't know. Let's be a little bit experimentative and do something dynamic and a bit outside the box. So typically at your health space, we do an intake with organizations to learn about um, their successes, to learn about their pain points. Um, and given People Care's commitment to staff engagement, we said, why don't we bring together those wellness champions and why don't we bring together your leaders in separate focus groups and do more of an interactive intake and get more than one voice sharing about what those successes and pain points are. Um, so uh, we have the privilege of carrying out both focus groups in early June and our decision to keep them separate was to really help support psychological health and safety so that uh, the wellness champions could speak um, the, their experience and not be worried about who's in the room, but vice versa for leaders, because leaders have also experienced their own unique challenges, really wanting to support staff um, and still having to live through a pandemic themselves and dealing with the repercussions of, of such an experience. So um, I think what we created uh, was uh, a truly an engaging experience that then helped to inform um, how the workshops that people care would unfold. Chandra, you attended uh, one of the facilitated, facilitated intakes as part of um, the Wellness Champion group. What was that like for you? I did. Um, I really liked what Nancy said about um, about separating the sessions and and making sure that each group felt comfortable. And I, I feel like we have a really, really comfortable champion group at this point. Um, and it, it really felt very open and very comfortable to, to be able to engage with that, with that group and with Nancy and her team. Um, I think that they used some really great tools for everyone to feel uh, as, as vulnerable as, as possible, sharing what they, what they were able to add to the session and and the tools were really wonderful and overall it was it was a great session it it went by very quickly and and it was just a a really wonderful way to get that information across I really want to also again commend Nancy's team. So one of the, the things that I heard afterward, um, and so your health space has a catalog of offerings, and so it's a number of different modules that you know may or may not resonate at different points in time for an organization depending on where they're at, and for individuals depending on where they're at. And what they did was they took away the the feedback from the facilitated intake and took a look at the offerings that they had and you know what your health space was all about and and they came back to us with a what we call this co-created plan for um targeted supports over 6 months and so we were very impressed and what i heard when i shared it back with our leaders and our wellness champions and said you know is this sort of what you had in mind was it was more than what they had in mind they felt very strongly that they'd been listened to that um, the supports that they were going to get again were very would be very would resonate and be very unique and tailored to what they had said. So that was uh, fantastic to see that. And uh, next step, of course, we have some assigned uh, CMHA facilitators that will continue to work with us as we roll these supports out over the six months. And that's what we want to talk about uh, in turn and next in terms of our our first set. So throughout the month of September. Uh, in partnership with our facilitators from CMHA, we held three separate sessions and close to 100 leaders from across the People Care organization attended one of those three sessions. And uh, the sessions were focused on creating, again, this foundation of language and um, a framework from which to think about uh, mental health and how, you know, we want to move forward to create this culture of well-being. And you'll see the three areas here were focused on how we can foster the healthy workplace, approaches to identifying and supporting employees who may be experiencing mental health challenges. And then again, a stra strategies around, you know, each of us has experienced pandemic in a different way and, and has a personal experience. And so how can we focus on our own personal resiliency and holistic wellness so that as one of our uh, employees has put it, if, if you're well, and feeling well, you can care for others in a meaningful way. And that's really what our, our um, organization is all about and caring for our residents, staff, families, and of course our partners. 
You did a great job in summarizing what the offering um, through Fostering Wellbeing Through Leadership is all about. Really, it's about starting conversations. Um, as I mentioned before, leaders haven't had it easy either. Um, and where leaders have really, um, I think, have been authentically trying is to be supportive for their teams. Um, and so we spend part of the workshop talking about, you know, what is this concept of psychological health and safety and um, how does it resonate in organizations? And we draw from the National Standard of Canada for Psychological Health and Safety in the Workplace as our basis for understanding that, specifically honing in on four psychosocial factors that really impact healthcare settings. Um, and what we aim to do in our workshop is um, name some of those challenges, with one of them being moral injury. We talk about burnout, uh, but burnout is something you can experience in any profession. And so we really hone in on that unique experience of healthcare workers, which is their values have been challenged and their ethics. Um, in the second hour, we really focus on what leaders can do to support someone they think might be struggling within the boundaries of their role. Uh, because that's sometimes challenging. As humans, we don't want to see others suffer, but we're leaders and not counselors. And so how do we provide that support so someone can thrive in their role, but not seek to erase symptoms? Because truthfully, we're not, we're not trained to do that, nor should we be doing that in our leadership roles. And the final hour, like you said um, so eloquently, Sheena, is that it's really about the resiliency of leaders. Um, we can't forget their own mental health in this whole process. Um, and so how are they taking care of themselves? And we've heard a lot in our stakeholder engagement that, you know, please stop using the word self-care. Um, so we talk instead about taking care of self under the lens of healthy habits and really linking it back to the dimensions of wellness. Um, thank you. I, I know Shandra and I both uh, had the honor of attending uh, the sessions and, and some learning, um, taking some learning back to our teams and our uh, organization and uh, Shandra, you know, what were some of your key takeaways, one or two things that, you know, really resonated with you? Definitely. So um, one of the things I, I liked most um, about the session with leadership was they introduced some of the main challenges that we have been facing. Um, and then they used some really great uh, tools to allow us to provide some anonymous responses. And, and I thought that that was a really great way to sort of make everyone feel comfortable and, and be as, as authentic as possible in our responses. Um, one of the key points that I thought was wonderful, um, towards the end, we were given an opportunity to uh, do some, some role play type scenarios and uh, to be able to sort of start practicing what some of those conversations surrounding mental health might look like. Um, and just sort of feel out the flow of how those conversations may or may not go. So that was a really, really helpful tool for us. Not to put you on the spot, but have you been able to sort of um, see an impact of, you know, the learnings from that session sort of in, in your day to day or in some conversations maybe that you've had with staff? I know that people come to you and, and want to talk about the things that they're experiencing or maybe their challenges. Definitely. Uh, I think that there's a, a lot um, less of a, a divide. I think that people are more comfortable having some of those conversations now uh, that they maybe weren't so much prior to that. So I think that that's really sort of leveled the playing field a little bit and, and made people feel like they, they can have those conversations and it's a safe space to do so. I think one of the key takeaways that I had was as a leader, I don't have to be the mental health expert. And so I just need to uh, be thinking about what others may be experiencing, trying to identify someone, you know, who potentially um, may need some support. And when people come to me and, and say that they do need some support to ask them, how can I help? And then try to wrap those supports around them, uh, connecting them with the experts and, and uh, seeing if we can make sure that they have what they need. Such great takeaways from you both, and, and thank you for um, sharing those. We always try to, um, you know, have people build that self-awareness. We're not going to pretend that we're going to come in and we're going to solve all the mental health issues that are going on in a health organization. Certainly not, but what we aim to do is foster connection and conversation. Um, one of the things we were forced to do during the pandemic was be physically distant, and what that did was that severed some relationships. But what the pandemic also did was it shed a light on mental health and helped us to recognize there is no health without mental health. 
And another thing is we saw people really struggling. So one of the stats that you see on your screen says, uh, you know, the rate of burnout doubled from 30% to 60% in among healthcare workers. And what we know about mental health surveys is that statistics are often underreported due to the stigma associated with mental health. And so we can probably predict that that's actually a lot higher. And we know seeing in trends in terms of staff shortages, in terms of the tensions uh, involved in workplaces, that it, it, it really is. And so we need to start having these conversations. And mental, uh, sorry, what COVID also did for mental health is it helped people to start talking about their mental health. And those conversations can't be left at the front door when we enter into our workplace, especially in workplaces where we provide healthcare support, because in some cases, those were ground zero. And when we talk about long-term care settings, it's not just that it was happening in the community, it was happening in the home. It was happening to colleagues that people care about. It was happening to the residents that they care for and about. And so um, what we're really seeing in at your health space is this desire for stigma to be reduced, is this desire for organizations to start having those conversations about not only what wellness strategies could we be in, uh, impacting or, or facilitating, but how can we be impacting the well-being of our staff? so that they can fully show up to work and feel like they're experiencing job satisfaction and thriving in their work. That's a great point, Nancy. And one of the things I was going to say is not only is a focus on mental health and well-being for your employees and engaging them and, and creating a, a culture of wellness in which we're all supporting one another, you know, there's an added benefit just on a very practical note. Right now we're experiencing, uh, uh, you know, an HR shortage, an HR and um, health human resource uh, crisis, if you will. And so not only is it the right thing to do, it has, has the added benefit of potentially uh, helping uh, with recruitment and engagement. People want to work for an organization that is genuinely and authentically caring about them and caring about their well-being. So I think that's uh, definitely important. So coming back to what's next for people care in terms of enhancing our wellness culture, after we did the leadership support sessions in September, the next step is psychological health and safety in the workplace for our frontline staff. Now that our leaders have made a start on having sort of that foundational knowledge and language uh, in which to help support um, their frontline staff. And that'll be our next uh, sessions based on um, feedback from our teams on what they need. And I'm gonna let Nancy tell a little more about what the next module is all about. Uh, thanks, Sheena. So one of my favorite modules that your health space has developed and truly it is because of how dynamic it is. So this health and safety module uh, aims to define what health and safety is, again, as related to the workplace um, using the National Standards Psychological Health and Safety as our backbone. Uh, and then we describe the 13 psychosocial factors. And what we do from there is have people identify where are their needs, where are they seeing some of the tensions or some of the gaps that they, they would like to see improved so that they can be uh, in a more psychologically healthy and safe workplace. And so the session is designed to be dynamic in that participants get to pick two psychosocial factors they want to focus on. And in addition, we hone in on the two psychosocial factors that were developed for healthcare specifically, uh, initiated by the Mental Health Commission of Canada. And those two psychosocial factors are uh, protection for moral distress and also psychological self-care. And so the psychological health and safety in the workplace uh, sessions will be taking place over the next four to six weeks across all people care homes. Um, we also want to take a look at our champion role. So again, I, I mentioned uh, it, the strategy is, is evolving, the role is evolving based on um, the champions and uh, the uniqueness of how it's playing out in each home. One of the things we know we, we may like to do, again, is creating um, better and better feedback loops. And so we want to take a look at how the champions might help us um, more formally measure the things we're doing by actually going out and perhaps engaging staff directly and getting some of that feedback on specific um, activities, resources, that sort of thing. 
And, you know, we, again, we like to uh, listen, learn, and then take action. And so we plan to repeat our employee wellness survey to see whether or not we've been able to sort of move the needle a little bit on how people are feeling, how we're doing, and the areas of wellness and recognition focus. So thank you again for joining us today to get a sense of the journey that People Care has been on for the last 12 months. There's certainly much more to come as we continue to enhance our wellness culture, lots of exciting things uh, that we have planned. And we hope we've inspired you a little bit to think about the importance of a mental health and well-being focus in your own organization. And on that note, just a few final thoughts. Thank you about introducing a champion role to your organization. Our championship team has not only helped to connect us on a home level, but it's also helped create an inclusive connection on an organizational level. Um, it's broken down many perceived barriers by including members from all different areas of the organization and bringing us together to support the same goals moving forward. And I just want to say a sincere thank you to People Care for inviting um, your health space and CMHA Ontario to be part of um, this journey that you are on in recovering strong. Sheena, you said earlier that, you know, you turn to the experts to support you in this journey, but what your health space is, we're really facilitators. We'll come with our content, but we take the time to get to know your health space, just like we did with People Care. Um, and any success that you're seeing with that is because you allowed us to come in um, staff were brave and staff allowed themselves to to be vulnerable and have these important conversations. So again, thank you so much for inviting us to be part of the journey and I'll look forward to continuing the journey with you as well. Thanks, Nancy. And I will say you're definitely the right partners in terms of our commitment to engaging and uh, informing an evolving strategy over time. And I guess that's one of the things that I want to share today with anyone uh, listening to this presentation is just um, to think about getting started. And so you don't have to have a fully baked plan. You don't have to decide exactly what you're going to do over the next 12 months. It's just important to identify it as a priority and get started. So again, I invite you to, to connect with People Care at any point in time. If you have any questions about uh, this presentation or about you know, getting started on your own Recovering Strong journey, I hope you'll reach out anytime. If you do have uh, any questions about your health space or you want to learn more about our program, please visit yourhealthspace.ca um, where you can find more information about the workshops that we offer. Get to know our team of over 22 trainers. They all have their bios on there. Um, and if you want to register for our program, um, registering simply means let's chat. Um, we'd be happy to connect with you. Thank you. And once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.